Hi folks, welcome back. So today we're back with the warning. This is another request from Mark V. So you warning fans, you make sure you give Mark a bit of love in the comments because he's the one over on Patreon um, bigging up the warning. So that's why we're here. Um, so I'll just read you out a little bit of what he said. He said that on the 8th of March that they've released two singles um, I had heard a phone recording of a live performance of this song, which is Hell You Call a Dream. Um, and he says what struck him was the heavy bass, quite heavy bass. He's a sucker for a good bass line and tone. Absolutely. And usually with the live performances, the bass is pretty noticeable. And then in parenthesis, he writes B string seems to get a workout. So your B string is, you know, if you have a five string bass, your B string's a top one now instead of an E. Okay, so boom, boom, low notes. I guess that's what got me into the band. Them being a three-piece makes the bass quite important and noticeable. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big role if there's only three of you. Um, and as he wrote this on the 14th of March, he says they've released a live performance of the song at the Pepsi Center CDMX. So in case you haven't seen it yet, I do have another reaction analysis video on the warning. It was my first time hearing the band. So this is going to be my second time hearing the band and what I heard I really loved. And thank you guys for the uh, very kind comments. Um, you guys seem to enjoy the video, so hopefully you enjoy this one too. So again, thank you to Mark for the request and without further ado, let's get going. Call 
That's a lot in a song that's sub three minutes. Yeah, wow. Might as well do the last second. <laughs> very good. Um, yeah, that's that's a lot packed in a very, very short song. So we'll see what Mark says about the uh, the, the very, very low uh, tuning. So um, the guitar is uh, definitely in like a drop D. I can tell from her fingers that, you know, she's playing her... Uh, or par chords or bar chords, whatever you want to call them. You'd normally play them like that. You'd play them with one finger across. So I definitely want to go down to D. I think a couple of you guys said that she's using, did, did I read somewhere that she's using a camper? Because that's actually what I have too, a camper stage. So um, yeah, in order to get that sort of really huge guitar sound, um, you know, just sort of piecing it together from, the, from some of the, I don't know if I got through all the comments. There was a lot of comments in that last video. But I did see some things about uh, her running to different cabinets and things like that. Of course, you're going to get a huge sound. You've got sort of infinite possibilities with that pedal. Like, um, I also have a, a drop tune pedal that I use. Um, although the, the camper actually has that feature inside. So I don't know whether she's using the drop tune on that to get down. Um, probably likely. And it means that you've got a lot, a lot of versatility. I mean, obviously, from the comments in the last video, a lot of you guys are aware of this. But for anybody who's not aware of it and is interested in it, um, really what it means is that, you know, if your guitar is in standard tuning, that you can effectively use your pedal to drop it. That was in B, wasn't it? It's actually in C, that song. Um, so although the bass is using the the, the top string, which is normally tuned to B, that's down to C, then she's actually tuned up one semitone. Again, I guess you could be using a, uh, a pitch shifting tuner to bring the bass up, but the guitar is down to C. We'll figure out the riff in a wee second, but like I said, uh, yeah, a lot of versatility for something like that means that, because uh, before these things were around, you just had to have another guitar in the wings at a different tuning because by going down that low from standard, you know, you'd have to use different gauge strings. Um, it, there's a whole litany of difficulties and uh, problems that you run into. So uh, yeah, huge guitar sound, uh, huge, even more huge bass sound. The drums sound incredible. Uh, obviously a lot of that's down to how it's played, the drum kit, but also whoever's mixing and engineering this, a drum sound is, insanely good the snare sound uh, it's just incredible sounding um you know it's definitely some backing tracks going on in there uh i really noticed it particularly in the back and vocals uh which is fine because it, it you know it adds to it you know i don't have a problem with backing tracks but it's definitely noticeable especially when there's only three people on stage and i mean i did notice that the drummer has a microphone and the bass is just or they're singing too in those moments but you can tell from um the depth and the layers in the uh, back and vocals that there's definitely uh, you know tracks running there to fill in some of that sound as well which is fine you know just just mentioning it because it's there so what we typically do here is run back through the video that was your reaction <laughs> um if any of you are still here then what we'll do is like what i guess falls under the analysis part of the video which is listen to it back a little bit more fine detail and see uh, what kind of things we notice so Please consider taking a moment to check out my other channel, JW Soundworks, where you will find unique cover song performances. Newly composed piano arrangements. And all of my self-composed original music.
straight into the chorus after just over 30 seconds. Incredible. There's a lot in there, so there's a little sort of keyboard intro, then we've got the heavy riff. Uh, guitar comes out, lead vocal. Um, I like the way that in the drums, even within that short time frame of the drums coming in, the, the sort of, the way the beat is played changes, goes on to the toms, or flams. You know, flam, uh, again, for anybody that doesn't know, flam is, you know, whenever you hit the drums and it's not exactly at the same time, so it's not, it's more very fast. And you get that great, you know, you'll see it if you haven't noticed it yet. That's what she's doing on that, you know, boom. Um, really, really fast. Um, let's see this uh, riff. So, uh, as we discovered before, it is a salvage that's in C minor from uh, just at the end. So. So it's all really using the first five notes of the C minor scale, C, D, E flat, F, G. I think the time signature, is this time signature different here? Let's go through it. It's something about the way it starts, so. Those are the main notes I'm hearing jumping out. Uh, jumping out. Whatever's happening in between that is a wee bit difficult to tell with the effects on it. It's super. This is something like that. Maybe not exactly right, but it's something like that. Okay, so the riff, um, I've actually tuned my guitar down. I've got a drop D tuner on this, which is handy. The EVH model can just pull that out. And then I've got my drop tune pedal. So we're down to C. Let's see what the riff is. Here, da, da. Da, you hear that? Da 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 da. So. doesn't work for me when I'm trying to play in real time and watch because it's a slight delay in the wireless headphones so I'm going old school here. I think that was it. Heavy riff. So the verse is very um, percussive in the in the. Not a lot of melody going on there, but that's fine. Yeah, um, you can hear the melody comes in afterwards. Um, I remember it might sound like a bit of a tangent, but I remember sitting seeing uh, Leonard Bernstein, the famous um, conductor, uh, talking about uh, Beethoven's um, one of Beethoven's symphonies. Is it number seven? The one with the Not 
exactly right. But that what that one, he talks about how it's just da na 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 da, na 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 na. You know, it's basically no melody, but the harmony moving around. I always thought that was really really interesting because it's a master work. Um, so yeah, very very uh, percussive and rhythmic. Um, singing at this point, not very melodic. Same three notes. I am changing the drums, flams. Here. Bass up higher. Triplet. There's those backing vocals. back in nice only once that time keeping everything moving forward so uh love those sort of decisions uh the chorus then is using what i always refer to as the iron maiden chord progression so if our tonic key is c minor then we're using a flat b flat and c for anybody who's watched before we've talked about that chord progression it's used a lot in uh, 80s um sort of rock and metal kind of stuff. You hear it in so many bands have used it. You can hear it still, they're able to use that same harmony, um, chord progression and make it really modern sounding. But yeah, sort of just playing it. down to what would be the G major there um, and I think it's used again can't remember the progression exactly there how did it end I think it finished on the G and that would send us I would point us to what would be called the perfect cadence which is when you use the fifth degree of the scale followed by the first degree so we're in C minor go to the G which has a raised seventh so it'll be a C harmonic minor. There's your B natural. And that pushes it back. So you get this. So I'm pretty sure that's how they ended. Here. So that's what's called a 5 1 cadence. Da, 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 da. Um, but instead of it being the end, that's it's connecting us back to that riff, which is back to the tonic key. Drums dropped out. Vocal harmonies. Oh, this is uh, somebody used a great word in the comments before, and it was perfect simplexity. Oh no. Maybe somebody didn't use that word. It was Nuno Betancourt. Uh, I was watching an interview with Nuno Betancourt, the guitarist from Extreme. I think he used it. My brain swirling. See, trying to keep up with YouTube comments and watching YouTube myself. My goodness. Can't remember where I got things. I don't even know if I'm saying things correctly half the time because, yeah, I just need more coffee. Um, but yeah, simplexity. Um, things sound simple, but there's definitely a complexity to them. So do you hear how we've come around to the second verse? But it sounds fresh because although it's using the same... Excuse me, it's using the same sort of harmony and structure, using the elements of the, the girls and maybe a wee bit of dropping in, dropping out, sorry, dropping out, coming back in again. Vocal harmonies, there was like a, it sounded like an additional third being sung above. Uh, so if we were doing it, uh, it's, it's, uh, let me just work it out. Yeah, so she's singing on the E flat there. And then you get the harmonies up would be on the, the G. It's the same notes of the scale. So on the piano here. 
gives a little bit more texture in the vocals um, and then the drums came in halfway through so it's yeah it's a lot happens in those five or ten seconds um none of it complex when you look at the individual parts but if you compare that with what happened in verse one it's why it's so interesting um and engaging for such a short song to sound like there's more to it than meets the eye <laughs> Variation in the vocal. Wow. So what key are we in? That's it's an F major chord in it, because that's surprising. Um yeah, you wouldn't associate that with C minor. F major. It works very nicely. Um they did that in the last song. There was a chord that I remember sort of taking me by surprise with the tritone in there. It's open in the dark. I've been on to Again. And how you call a dream. So uh, that's where I guess the first time you're listening to that, uh, you'd be expecting it because it's building up to the heavy chorus again there. So the dropout, always effective um, when bands use that sort of uh, trick. Very effective. Keyboards playing the dream. hook. Da -da. And the back and vocals in there too. Every time that chaos drives me wild, Big on crowd participation. Come together. Always love those abrupt endings too. Instead of hey! you know, uh, that's cool. There's, there's a place for that as well. Like, but I like those sort of abrupt endings like that. Um, yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. These girls, have immense amount of talent. Great performers. Um, superb sound. Um, and yeah, loved it. So what's next? Um, yeah. Yeah. So thanks very much for watching, folks. And if you liked what you see, and if you enjoyed what you've seen. So yeah, thanks for watching, folks. And if you enjoyed this, please do have a dig around the channel. I think I've got over 220 videos. Some of them uh, covers, classical music, classical piano stuff. I'm a classical piano teacher. That's what I do as my day job. Um, and uh, yeah some own original music and stuff on there. So, uh, and loads of these kind of videos talking about bands and things like that. So have a look around um, because inevitably it happens where people suggest, listen to this or have you heard that or whatever. And I've actually already done it. So have a look about if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you're passionate about piano, whether as a player or listener, or if you're considering online lessons or masterclasses, please visit my YouTube channel John Wilson Online Piano Lessons. There you'll discover a wealth of piano performances with many more to come. Based on demand, I'll also be introducing video tutorials for piano pieces.
Thank you.